here's the CNC router all complete. As you can see, we uh, mounted the uh, melamine bed down and then mounted the motor and went ahead and grooved the bed for the T-tracks to mount hold down clamps. The only problem I had with the bed was trying to get it uh, parallel to the gantry and the uh, cutter. I had to keep uh, playing with that, but it's uh, still not perfect. It was as close as I could get it, so we'll have to use a spoil board if we're cutting uh, a pocket or something. If we're cutting all the way through, uh, it's not going to be that critical. Uh, just put a spoil board, spoil board down. But if we have to cut a pocket, we'll have to uh, level it with a cutter first. So let's uh, take a tour around and see all the finishing touches that we've done. We've got all the limit switches mounted for the uh, homing of the machine. This one right here is for the x-axis. And this one here is for the z-axis. Had to mount it on a little aluminum plate here and mount a block here to trip it. Same thing here for the x-axis. Had to take aluminum plate to mount it to. Uh, this is the existing plate that came with the machine. Hits the trip switch. The y-axis limit switch is down here. Had to make a bracket for that also. The other thing we did was tidied up all the cables and mounted the uh, the track for the cables, cable track. So that's all tidied up. Same thing here for the Y axis travel. The other thing I did was mount two extra E stops, one on each side of the machine, one here. and one on this side. You know, I bought them off of Amazon. Of course they came from China but they were only like four dollars and fifty some cents for two of them. And uh, these boxes here came from uh, the big box store. Just cut a hole in them for the switch. Bolted them right to the side of the machine. This is where the three cables come in to the panel box from the limit switches to the uh, breakout board. They are uh, hooked to 12, 13, and 15 on the C10 board. Also the e-stop switches are wired in series and they connect together on this little terminal strip uh, that go to the breakout board where the original one was on 10 and uh, 10 and the 5 volt. So that takes care of the panel box. It's all complete now. We can put the cover on it and put the screws in it. Make it a little uh, more dust tight. cable for the spindle motor runs up overhead here. Goes over to the the drive mount on the column. Got the power coming from a 220 receptacle right above me. Feeding this uh, on off switch here which feeds the drive then from the drive up overhead back to the motor so that wasn't too difficult to get installed 
had a little trouble uh, figuring out how to get the spindle motor going. I didn't want to go very fast and found out I had to run it or set the uh, couple parameters at 400 hertz for that to work properly. That turned out okay, so everything seems to be working good now. So we're going to call this project complete. There may be some other things I do later on, uh, maybe make a dust shoe and uh, get a pump to run water through the water cooled motor. Right now it's okay if you just run a little short run of something, it, it won't be too bad, it won't get too hot. But if you run it very long, then I'll have to do something with running water through it. But all in all, the project turned out pretty good. Took quite a while. Uh, besides getting out, taking a long time to get all the parts, it just took a while to build it, working on it part time. So I'm very pleased with it, and uh, we'll uh, be making some future videos with some parts made on it. Thank y'all for watching.